Hello my convicts and convict catchers, it is I like my convict bringing you guys and gals another tech video. So today in the tech video we want to talk about something I was actually asked about in the stream and I thought we'd jump into it and we'd have a look. I don't really need this headset and I don't know why I put it on for because I don't need a microphone from it. So today I want to talk a little bit about NetDuma R2, the new update, the R2 3.0.205 update. It's a brand new update that's just come out. And uh, someone asked me while I was live streaming today, we're doing Apex Legends. So let's jump over there and let's have a look. So let's swap over. So here we are, we're on the page. You can see here where you can do the connection test. Now what you can do is you can go to what's called quality of service. Now this is the only one that I think I know of that has changed as such. I will keep an eye out. If there's anything else, I'll do a video on it as well. But it's really more in regards to here the auto setup because now there's an advanced tab as before you could just begin auto setup or obviously cancel. Now there's an advanced tab. So when you click on advanced tab, you can see here now you've got tar target ping versus idle, minimum download setting, minimum upload setting, anti spikes, and max spike size. So what you can now do is you can actually configure things that would happen in your connection benchmark to try and improve or to try and improve obviously the setup that you're doing here or the, or the auto setup that you're trying to, to basically sort out. What basically happens here, idle time is when your internet basically is doing nothing. It's just idle and during the connection benchmark you'll see these. So what I would suggest you do if you do change any of these and use this and obviously try and go in and have a look at the connection benchmark and see how it comes out. So let me do an example. So we've got a target ping here of five milliseconds. So I know my connection generally will go around about 17 milliseconds. Uh, minimum download setting. So this is the minimum you want your download to go to. So you can choose how far down you want your download to be able to, you know, be manipulated to. Now you can't do it all the way. You can only go down as far as 30%, as you can see, you can't go any further than that. And then obviously the same for your upload setting as well. Depending on obviously what your upload speed is, you can select what your minimum being, my minimum obviously being around two milliseconds or megabits per, two, two milliseconds, two megabits per second, sorry. And then you can have a look at the max spike size as well. You can tick on the anti-spikes and it'll give you the chance to obviously look at here and then you can choose how uh, you want to configure the spikes or how, you know, what would you say is a reasonable area for your spikes to be at. So if I was looking at a connection of trying to get them um, to be around 17 milliseconds and obviously you want to probably go, maybe you could try 20 and try that and see what happens. And then what you can do is you can begin auto setup and what this will do now is it will run a test here. And as you can see, you can see the idle. This is the idle and where this is going to land. And then it'll do the download and upload. And then it'll try and obviously configure them to this. Now, as you can see, due to obviously when I have my new connection installed, my upload and download speeds have always been going crazy as of late. I don't know why. But the, as you can see, reaching in excess of 100 milliseconds, which is not good. Um, and this is because I, I had a, a previous line and then obviously this line added on top. Oh, uh, well, this, this line was already there and they just added that one. But as you can see, with a bit of congestion control to 65%, we managed to lower that down. Because you want to have your download and upload speeds follow the line of your idle, per se. You want to have it as close to idle as possible. As you can see, my downloads achieve that. My uploads has been generally the main offender most times for me uh, purely because obviously I'm only getting five upload and I'm five kilometers from my exchange. But I was getting bad ping times yesterday. Unfortunately, a uh, bit of a bad luck. We, we had a weird thing that the telephone lines are being cut out over the weekend. And they've managed to fix the line, which I did yesterday. And then I was getting 40 download, 5 upload, and a ping of 15, or 14, or 13, which I did in a video. You can go check it out. 
I've phoned them up today saying, why is it gone back up? You know, once it, why is it dropped again and gone back down and I'm not getting 15 ping? And BT, just absolutely useless, unfortunately. Instead, they just want to say, oh, we don't know. We don't know why, apparently. But I'm watching BT. I, I know there's some BS going somewhere because OpenReach managed to fix it. And all of a sudden, we've gone back to 20 ping again. So I just feel like they are throttling the lines. Or maybe a lot of people didn't know about it, and then all of a sudden they do know now that the lines are running. But I doubt that was the case. I just think that BT are throttling the connections to give us lower speeds. So as you can see here, we managed to get the connections pretty decent. My upload, like I said, is always going to be my main offender anyway. But well, with all the settings I've done in the advanced tab, obviously that will help to try and push out any of those inconsistencies. And then what we'll do is we'll run a connection benchmark and we'll see how that progresses on from there. So that's basically all it is. It's just a way of reconfiguring what you want this test, this automated test here to try and achieve with your connection. Okay, so that's saying that that's completed, and you can see my download is to 199% for upload speed, which is fine. And then obviously you can go and do a con connection benchmark test, and you can test out the connection benchmark here, and just see what happens. So let's see if that makes any difference, what kind of difference that makes to the connection. So you can see what my upload speed is. So I'm actually getting more than five upload, or oh, it looks like it was in the region of five upload download obviously is where it should be which is good so let's see how this helps with the ping test so i said not to ping above 20 milliseconds and uh, it has achieved that as you can see this is idle so obviously it it can probably only achieve what you know what your connection can physically work at. Um, obviously, uh, like anything, it's not gonna it's not gonna definitely you know completely rule out anything on there. But as you can see, it has improved the download speeds. The download's more or less the same as the idle on there, seventeen, eighteen, and then twenty four for the upload. So you could probably try and reconfigure it again and to see but i feel like it's it's met the criteria of what i've asked it for um because obviously i asked it to try and keep it around 20 milliseconds but that's that's basically all it is it's another way of reconfiguring your auto setup here so you can obviously determine what you want it to be uh on there so you can see target ping versus idle um and then anti spikes it's gone back it's it has gone back to what it is if i bring this okay so five milliseconds is okay for that so if i bring these down to the lowest possible let's see what happens this time around and then we'll leave it there but that's basically all it is it's just a Another way of doing this auto setup, it gives you the opportunity to choose yourself what you want to try and configure for. Obviously ignore this part. This is just doing a just a hundred hundred, so it's like a a non-touched idea of what my connection's doing at the moment. And as you can see, it's pretty bad. Because before, if you noticed, if you ever tried it before or you ever used auto setup previously, it would, for me 
prefer preferably for the upload and download it will put me down to like one or two percent and that would be far too low my upload speed on one percent is literally like non-existent internet um so obviously they had to change and they had to make some changes to the download and upload speed tests but now they've given you the option of being able to configure it yourself so you can fully manufacture what you want it to try and do itself and then it will obviously lower your download and upload speeds to try and achieve that if it possibly can So as you can see, this is kind of where you want it to be. You want the download and upload to be as close to idle as possible. Obviously, you will know what your main offender is if it's going to be download and upload speeds. Now, it normally does the test around. For me, does it run about seven, eight times, and then it'll choose it'll save settings for that i think in the past if it has achieved its correct state it will just come up do it by maybe once or twice and then it'll just say yes it's done it's fine that's good Okay, so he's saying that that's good enough, uh, 30%, so he can save those settings again. As you can see, he's given me 1.5 upload and 10.5 for download. Uh, we'll just run the connection test just one more time, and then we'll leave it there. So basically, all it is, is idle is where you want idle to be, you download and upload where you want it to realistically aim for, and uh, anti-spike and obviously how far or how much of a anti-spike you would like it to have. You've kind of got to be realistic with it. Don't try and do what I'm doing here. This is just a random test of me saying, is it possible to bring things down or any lower? You can try it out for yourself and see if it works. If it does, then by all means, you can use that. But you want to be kind of more realistic. If you know roughly what your connection's like, you want to try and obviously keep it to the right setting on there because as you can see it brings your download and upload speeds right down in order to try and achieve what you've asked it to do And there you go. So as you can see here, my download and my upload speed are perfect. This is where you want them to be. Upload is a little bit off by two, maybe three milliseconds, which is normally the case for me. That's why I sometimes I feel like I shoot someone and then I just instantly die sometimes to people, which is why I, I hate my connection half the time. But it is what it is, unfortunately. So as you can see, the 1792, 1922, and 1781, if I go back here to what it was previously, which is 18, 24, and 17, yep, and then it's 17, 19, and 17. So it has improved, because obviously before it was 24, and that was 18, which is a, long, a lot of milliseconds difference between what I'm seeing and what's happening. And then obviously this is very much closer to where it wants to be in terms of the connection on there. So I'm doing this video obviously to help people out. So there you go. That's, that's more or less it. all that does is just basically tries to configure to your specification, helps you to specify 
what you want but don't forget obviously it's going to affect your download and upload speeds and then if you've got multiple users in your house using your connection 1.5 upload is not going to go very far and uh, obviously download speed as well so you do want to try and think how much download how much upload can i sacrifice uh before obviously running these kind of tests but that's that's more or less all it does it's just an auto configuration tool which then you can use in conjunction with your connection benchmark to try and get your connection to be as best as possible anyway there you go so that's all i can see that's changed in the r2 3.0.205 update hopefully this helps you out if you've got any problems let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video please do give it a like subscribe if new and hit that notification bell because it really does help me obviously to continue what i'm doing i also live stream every single day half past 10 to half past two on monday to friday that is monday to friday not saturday sundays weekends because weekends i take off to spend time with my my son who's autistic but monday to friday half past 10 to half past two i live stream every single day unless there's any issues or any holidays with school and stuff like that but uh, hopefully this helps out and also i will link in the description below as well the discord which you can go to and join discord if you wish it is free to do so and we do spend a fair amount of time in discord and you can meet obviously a lot of the supporters that are in there a lot of the convicts and convicts obviously who help support the channel and do what we do so if this helps you out like i said don't forget to like and subscribe and yeah it is Ida Cap Convict signing out. So always, I salute you, I convicts and convicts, and I'll see you soon in another video. If you're wondering why I'm looking over here, I've got two monitors, so I'm just about to end the call. Anyway, bye for now.